Now, I'm a plasterer, I'm not a decorator. So this whole room's gonna get skimmed. Some people might say it's stupid, but cracks like that. And holes that are all over the place would take me forever to patch. So I'm gonna plaster all the walls, get ready for the next stages. Let's see what's in here then. Got a little package from Bondit, so let's see. Give me a nice little magazine, that's nice, isn't it? Wonder lightweight filler. Won't be using that some plastering. Monster scrim. This is good stuff, I'll be honest. That'll come useful for the paneling. Good gear, and I didn't actually ask for this. That's really cool. Mega stick. PVA. I don't know, crack cork, that'll do. Alright, that'll come in handy. Obviously I'm a plasterer, and I know I'm going to be wasting a lot of time, because look, here's what we've got to do, just to prepare our walls for plastering. Got to undo all the plug sockets. Got to fix corner beads to the windows. PVA. But even with that said, the finish we're going to get at the end is going to be so much better. We're going to have flat walls, we're not going to have any paint texture anywhere. Everything would need to be scraped down before painting. We'd have to fill in the holes and then we'd have to wait for the filler to dry. Then we'd have to sand it back and then we'd have to add more filler. There's so much more work than filling, scraping. It's not just as simple as whacking a bit of filler on. Now, luckily, I'm a plasterer, and I could get these walls done in a day. Now, again, I'm not showing off here, but a man in my state is going to be so much better for me to plaster rather than fill. And that is why, in my opinion, plaster is the better option. I thought this was two rolls of scrim. This is one big, fat, hefty roll. It's probably overkill for this little patch. Since I've got it. Madness, I've never seen scrim so big. This scrim tape's huge, innit? Look at that. Two in one. No problem. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a quick note about the preparation here. This is a painted wall. Now, the point of this is this isn't got a high suction. It's not gonna pull in the plaster at an extremely fast rate, and generally it's a nice surface to work on. This is a pre-grip. This is brilliant stuff from Bondit, but Using this on a wall like this, in my opinion, would be wasted. This is great for troubled surfaces. Say if you've got an area where you've got silky paint, where the PVA will struggle to dry. Say if you've got an area where you've got lots of different backgrounds, or say you've, you've even got bathroom tiles. This stuff is perfect. And I've done a separate video on this, by the way. It's a brilliant primer. Click that around here somewhere, and there'll be something that pops up if you want to watch it. But on a wall like this, where it is just paint, then the best thing to use, in my opinion, is PVA. And there's two reasons for that. One, it's sufficient enough. You don't need to go overkill on these walls because PVA does a great job at doing what it does, and it just kills suction. That's all you want from PVA. PVA has worked extremely fine for many years without worrying about any plaster falling off. Is you can put a nice layer of PVA and it's not too thick, Three two parts water, one part PVA is perfect for this. Great little tip is you can always do a little test patch. So before you start, just put a little PVA on the wall. See how fast it dries. See how fast it pulls in. And then if you really want, whack a little bit of multi-finish on that little patch once it's dried just to see how it dries up. That's a great way to test your rate of suction on a wall before you even start plastering. And then if it's really pulling in fast, you know you need to apply another coat of PVA. The other reason I love PVA is because it dries fast. I can whack PVA in a room, plaster it the same day. The only issue with these pre-grits and these primers like blue grit, this pre-grit, green grit, yellow grit, all the grits, <laughs> you've got to wait a day for it to dry. Where PVA, this could be dried within even 40 minutes sometimes, 30 minutes, depending on how fast it pulls in on the walls. And then for me, a painted wall like this, PVA is more than good enough.
we are. We're applying the first coat of plaster. Now, once the preparation has been done and it is just coming to the plastering stage, this is probably the fastest part of the whole process because realistically, all we're doing is applying two coats of plaster, one directly after each other, and you've got an overall process of about, depending on how you do it, um, for this process I use the same mix for the same batch, so basically mixed one big mix up, applied the second coat, flattened it, and then applied the second coat directly after it. Now I'll go into that in detail in a minute, but that process is only takes me from two and a half to three hours. Um, if you use the same mix in plastering, that's how long it, it takes. You've got finished wall, there's no patching, you've got minimal um, bit of filling to do at the end, which, yeah, there will be a bit of, tiny bit of filling. <laughs> no one's perfect, but... Overall, you're looking at two and a half hours, you've got two walls done and the reveals. Uh, five hours process, you'll have a room done. Now again, like we were saying before, the process of preparing your walls plastering takes a bit of time. But once you've done that, it really isn't that hard and it really doesn't take that long. And the beauty of plastering rather than filling is there's no waiting times. There's, uh, there's no period where you have to wait for the plaster to dry, sand it back, apply another coat, sand it back. Beauty of plastering is you can get it all done in one day, walk away knowing it's finished. So this is my wife. Do you mind telling YouTube what you're up to? I've just dropped the baby off because she's sleeping. And um, I'm going to leave Blaine in charge of plastering and watching her while I go out for a cup of coffee. So I've got this. And childcare. And childcare. <laughs> You'll be great. I'm sure. She's asleep. If she wakes up, don't worry about the rest. Thanks, love. <laughs> so the game plan's changed. I was going to whack that wall on as well, but this wall with the reveals, that with the reveals. And then if the baby wakes up, I'm not going to be stressing my back out. Ollie is coming back in a bit, or she says that. <laughs> well, yeah, the difference already with a bit of plaster. Give it a flat and then we'll apply the second coat. Now, like I was saying, I'm applying the second coat directly on top using the same mix. This is a great way to speed up plastering. If you have, if you've got two hits that aren't massive, yet the the room's too big for one big hit, then what you can do is break it down into two smaller hits where you use the same mix. So you mix the large batch up, mix it a bit wetter than what you would usually. Apply your first coat as you would normally, flatten, and then directly apply your second coat. It's a great way to save time, and really it gets the same results. And sometimes, if not better, in some circumstances. There's a little video that you should see floating around under here. I did a video, it's called Nitro Plastering. And I'll go into that whole detail of plastering, how I did it. Um, but it's a really good way to mix it up. That's it. Both coats are on the wall. So they're covered. Look at the difference. If I was patching that, it'd take me about two days, but... You know, it's all covered, everything looks the same. It's only just been applied, so I've not been flattened or anything, but... I just much prefer to plaster rather than messing around patching in. <laughs> and the baby's still asleep, so we're doing alright. There she is. What have you got? Seco. Did you get me any beers? So here we are, coming to the final stages of plastering. Now, if you do it correctly, you're going to get smooth, flat walls, which hardly need no attention afterwards. Um, I'm doing a wet trowel here, and this is basically the final parts of plastering. This is probably stage seven. Uh, seven steps all together to get flat walls in plastering, by the way. Check out the channel if you've not seen any videos on plastering before, but this is a wet trowel. And as you can see, we've got smooth walls, it's hardly no imperfections, and it just leaves a great finish, if done properly, plastering is the way to go and you will really get a finish that you'll be proud of um, and if you're doing it right where you're trialing both ways and using water at the correct points you're going to get a good finish and this is why I prefer plaster over any filling but I'm not saying that is the only option now I'll be completely honest with you I am rubbish at decorating I'm rubbish at filling I'm rubbish at patching now a full-time decorator Decorating and filling would be the better option for them, but like I'm saying, for me in my situation, plastering is the way to go. But the beautiful thing about our trade is there is no real right way to do it. As long as you get a good finish at the end, that is all that matters. So, 
everyone's got to do what they find best. Now, the good thing about this being my house, I can take fine attention to cleaning the skirts, cleaning the architraves. But by the end, we've got a good looking wall, and that is all we're striving for. So that's it, the room's plastered. Even though it takes a lot more prep, it takes a bit more time to skim. I believe that patching is inferior to the skimming option. This is done in the three hours, even with a clean up of the skirts. Everything's finished, there's no sanding, there's no, nothing else to add to it, it's just done. So now we can crack on and get on with the second fix. Now, if you're enjoying this series, you can watch the other two episodes here, I made a little playlist. And uh, please subscribe and we'll talk to you about how this project's working and basically walk you through what we're doing. Blaine Grey Plastic, we're going to see you on the next one.